Hello, my name is Wendy Manzo. I am a prophetic artist, and today I am speaking with Nirel Crabtree, the founding pastor of Dayspring Church in Sydney. And today we're going to discuss what it was like when we started to do art in worship at Dayspring. Hi, Narelle, thank you for being with us. Hey, it's great to see you. Even if we are on other parts of the sides of the world, it's great that we can connect this way. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's so much history between us. You know, it was 15 years ago that I started painting at Dayspring and you were very instrumental in how prophetic art came about in Dayspring. So what I wanted to do was go back in time and kind of find out what you were thinking at the time. Yeah, that, that's an excellent question because I think, you know, we had no idea really where it would end up. At that time, um, you know, we were used to having worship more defined. I think, you know, everywhere worship was defined by people singing and by instruments and perhaps occasionally there might have been some idea that there could be some dancing even up the front, those sort of things. Um, I suppose, though, probably what made room for it was that I remember years before that when I'd been reading the Psalms and it struck me how incredibly expressive worship was. And I think we've defined worship more along the lines of it being singing and perhaps an instrument. Mm. Whereas when I was reading the Psalms, it just seemed like worship was the expression of your love for God. And it was something that was a thing of joy. So yes, an example of that kind of worship that was saying how much I love God and how wonderful he is to me. And I just got to get it out of my system. Yes, an example of that could be that we sing or we use instruments. But I think that that's an example of worship not confined to the expression of worship. So I think way back years before I had been, without knowing what that could look like, I had been open to the idea of being able to express our love for God, our adoration of God, our joy in our love of God in ways more than as say, for example, I was brought up singing a hymn from a hymn book, which really is kind of pretty limited. So I think that opened the way, even though I would never have thought perhaps of art at that time, I think it opened the way because I really saw worship as being something that was an expression of our whole body, soul and spirit. Oh, perfect. Because it's not just singing. Sometimes I say to people, worship is your whole life. And worship yeah. is it's a love song to God. And everything you do, playing with the kids or washing the dishes, everything, if you're doing it to the Lord, is your worship. But I remember being quite um, amazed that you wanted me to paint in front of the congregation. So I'm thinking that takes quite a lot of trust in the person that you're asking to do that. And I, from memory, I was in Dayspring maybe a year, maybe a year and a half at that time. So how does a pastor get the trust in the person that they're going to put on the stage? How do you build that yeah. relationship? I, that's a, a really good question because it, and I think there are some elements here that apply to whether it's, we're talking about um, somebody playing an instrument or somebody singing. Mm. I think it, it applies a little bit as well to those of us that might get up and speak or, or preach. I think first of all, it comes down to, you know, are we people that love Jesus? Are we people that enjoy relationship with him? Are we people that want to have a sense of what is the Holy Spirit doing with us today? And I think you can, um, as you talk with people and as you get to know people, you you get to get an understanding of, of their, and an appreciation of their love for God and their joy in God. And, and so even before we looked at the whole area of art or say you and I getting to know each other more, mm. um, we had had that same sense for people that would be on our worship team as singers or people that were playing instruments, our first priority was not how great is their skill, even though that's really important. I mean, nothing worse than having somebody up the front who's tone deaf singing and trying to lead us. That's a super big distraction. Yeah. 
Yeah. But so, so is somebody who actually is just up there for the performance. Yeah. Maybe can sing well or play the instrument well, but it's all about a performance, not an expression of love to God. Yeah. So for us, way back from the beginning, whether it was somebody getting up and speaking, somebody, you know, leading with prayer things or somebody, an instrument, um, it was a given to us that we knew them. So it came out of relationship. Relationship yeah. was also important, always important. Yeah. Um, we knew that we could see, you, you just know when you pray with people, talk with people, you, you, you can't help but hear about their love of Jesus and their joy for Jesus. And then when you realise they've also got um, a skill that could actually help and bless other people to worship God more, then it's like, oh, it's a natural. We, we would love to come and help you. And even, you know, I even can think of, of times there where we, we had people that, you know, actually was quite skilled, but they were not used to being up the front. So maybe we helped them in that regard. So when it came to art, yes, you hadn't been at the church a long time, but we all, you and I had relationship. And I could see your first and foremost, before I even knew that you were an artist, I could see just in worship your you know, abandonment to God and love and your joy in worship. So then when we started discovering... You don't realise you've been watched, <laughs> but of course. And, and it's yeah. not a little watching because there was nothing I was watching for. Yeah. Um, it's I wasn't watching to see, yeah. oh my goodness... I mean, I want to use Wendy. Now, is she good enough? No, you just, yeah, no. you can just get to know people. Yeah. And you enjoy the worship together that you have because of your love and joy. Love and joy are, are, are huge to me. And that inevitably comes out as we, as we worship. And it was our worship together with him that I guess became evident and I then the more I to know you, I discovered along the way that you are an artist. And it was like, oh, really? What does that look like? I had yeah, no idea. What it does that look like? Yeah. yeah. I remember and some so very this, intense worship seasons at Dayspring where I was quite happy to go home straight after worship because it, everything happened in the worship. You know, your heart was yielded, your heart was filled. It was like, eh, church is done. Yeah. Mm. It is because it's very relational. It's a relational with each other. It's not me there doing my own worship to God, oblivious everyone else. You know, it's, and it's an interesting thing in the New Testament. They didn't know about this kind of me being independent. It's we all together are delighting this in God way. and worshiping God. You know, yeah. Yes, to, to God, but together as well. Together, yeah. 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 And so I think when we're doing that, we... we, we we enhance each other's worship because we're worshiping together and enjoying him and enjoying each other. Yeah. So then yeah. when it came to discovering you were an artist, I, you know, I can't remember any specific conversations initially. It just kind of unfolded. It was like, yeah. wow, that's what you do. I wonder what it would look like for you to, in the things that you show your normal love and appreciation and joy of life what would it look like if you started doing that in church as as an extension of what is happening or it's not even an extension but adding to what is happening in that work see how hard that is to define because it's not like it's an extension of yourself it's still you it's all it is it's all yeah. part of you you know and yeah. i i that phrase where you said what would it look like you just took me back because we were constantly going, okay, what would it look like if we did it like this? What would it look yeah. like if we did it like this? And I think that's why it's so hard now for me to answer the question for artists who are asking, how do I start painting and worship? Is it evolved for us? It wasn't yes. even called prophetic art then. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't have a label. And because it was a, ongoing relationship and an evolving thing it's hard to go oh that's how you do it yeah. so i fully think there is not one way no no i i think even though we weren't using we weren't using this label i think our church at that time and still is we were a very and let, i want to define it when i use the word but we were a very 
prophetic community. Yes. And what I mean by that was we were really wanting to be desensitive to Jesus, what are you wanting to do with us today? To the point mm -hmm. that we would put things aside if we felt the Holy Spirit was leading in a certain way. So I think that even though we may not have called it prophetic art, what we were doing at that time was prophetic worship because I know our worship leaders were really not only in the lead up to the day, but on the day as well, you know, being very sensitive, it, the Holy Spirit's doing something, let's linger here a little longer or let's shift yeah. into this because we're, we're being sensitive. And that was, to be quite honest, that was one of the, the standouts um, it, in probably in my heart and spirit, it didn't take me by surprise, but probably in my head it did, was that when you started doing that, and I think if I remember rightly, when you started doing the art, uh, you were first of all just down on, on the floor, and then we realised we actually needed you up there as part of that worship team. But I remember those first few times when you did, it was like you were being, there was this sense of you picking up what the Holy Spirit was doing with the all of us. Mm -hmm. And you started to bring that in your painting and it, you, you expressed in your painting um, what mm -hmm. was happening through instruments or voices or um, what we were singing and how we were participating. So in that sense, although we might not have called it prophetic, it was right from the word go because everything in that community at the time, and I think it's still, in fact, I think it's how it should be, is that we're not there to put on a performance. We've got our list and we're sticking to it. Thank you very much. But actually, God, what do you want to do with us today? And so it was really important to have you come up on the stage where the, where the, um, the worship team, the singers and the those playing instruments were because it was part of the whole of what was happening for us for worship. I remember that stage very clearly because of the difference it actually made to feel that I'm part of the worship team. And then there's this sense of, oh, of course, and the accountability and the responsibilities that go with being on the worship team all comes into play. And I was like, hang on. That means as part of the worship team, you are at, I was already there, but you are at the pre-service prayer meetings. Yes. And it's like, oh, that should be a, a, a box to tick. That must happen. You must be part of the whole um, yes. preparation for the morning. Yes. To know what's yes. going on. And I had this, and if I was standing in front of the canvas and I was self-conscious, it's like, oh, where I am, couldn't do it. It had to be, okay, it's just me, God, and the canvas. No, nothing, no one else is here. Yes. Mm. And, and that was, and I think for anybody that wants to do art like this, it is a, it is a learning curve, just yeah. in the same way as for any person who comes on a worship team and starts being part of one of the singers. You know, there is that growing into being less self-oriented and, and focused mm. Uh, just because of the nervousness and the newness of it all and yeah. and getting lost in the Holy Spirit. Same thing for those of us that might do the the speaking or even those intro, you know, you know, the part that leads between worship and, and going into the service, yeah. all of those things. There, there is just that there's that we become actually more comfortable in his presence and less awkward about the fact that we're in front of people because we realize actually we're all here together, we're worshiping together. We're all wanting to sense, bring something, bringing our part of what the Holy Spirit is wanting to do with us. Mm -hmm. And there may be some people up the front being that, but those that are, are um, standing in the, in, the, in the audience are still bringing and contributing. Um, oh, absolutely. I might have a voice that puts me on stage as a singer, but I'm as much a part of worship as I'm, as I'm standing there and, and as it is for the whole of, the whole of us. Yeah, I always felt that the congregation was was pushing up the worship yeah. team. It, it was yeah. felt like it came that way and not from the stage to the congregation. Yeah. It was the other way around. It's yeah. the we all together. Yeah. Um, yeah. As I uh, travelled and painted in other churches, pastors would ask me, what, what do I look for? What kind of skills does an artist need to have? And I'd be like, 
a yielded heart. Mm. That's it. You, you can teach everything else, but you can't teach someone a yielded heart to be there yeah. for the congregation, yeah. for God. Mm. Yeah. And I, I know it at times, you know, just in our conversations over the years, mm. there's been this willingness on you to have thought you knew what the Holy Spirit was doing. And yet in that sense, to use your words just now, that yieldedness to say, okay, I, I feel now the Holy Spirit is saying, and it's not saying you didn't get it right before, but I think sometimes the Holy Spirit does keep us on the very edge. Will, will we be sensitive to his nudges yeah. as much as we are to hearing him before we we get up same thing when I speak I've got to have that same thing of yeah you know I I can do all my preparation but Holy Spirit you're the one in charge now so I'm going to in that sense hand my preparation to you and you pick and choose or present something totally different um I'd That's rather be I learned it I learned it from you we're just gonna throw the notes out and go with the Holy Spirit <laughs> Well, I've found that that knife edge is a, is a safer place to be than me being in my own place of, I feel like I'm yep. in control and this is secure. It actually doesn't have much life in it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? It's the trust factor. Yeah. The trust factor. People would um, want, want to be painting in worship and wanting to know what they were going to paint. I was like, yeah. no. You just have to trust it when you know like when you turn on the light switch the light is going to come on you yeah. more trust that when you stand in front of the canvas that that god will put something on that pan for a minute i think it's really important you use the word trust and mm. i think it is it is a community that we have that trust so that when mm. you get up to, to paint or somebody gets up to sing or somebody gets up to speak that we know that we are loved that even if we messed up, made a mistake, got it all in a, in a mess on a given day, we are still loved and totally accepted and we can absolutely trust the community that we are in that's because of the love and the joy that's part of that community. So then we're not coming from something that's driving us that I have to perform well, be it in art or in singing or in playing the instrument or in speaking or else it won't be good enough. I'm actually here um, because this community and God loves me and I'm just going to bring a gift of my worship today. Yeah. So I talk about that being your identity is in your acceptance, not in your performance. Once you yeah. know you're accepted and loved from God as well as the community, yeah. your performance comes out of that rather yes. than around the other way. Yeah, it's very good. Mm. Very good. Make, makes all the difference because I think when we're operating out of that, that there's a, a peace and a joy about us that is evident in, its, um, in the delivery of whatever we're doing because it's coming out of that real sensitivity to the spirit, not a fear of man. No fear of man can creep in then. Oh, it's, it's fascinating how it can get in. You know, yes, and I would say, you know, to artists, they would come and say, oh, we just want to release heaven on earth. That's what we're doing when we paint, releasing heaven on earth. And I'm like, well, there's no worry in heaven. There's no fear in heaven. And yeah. they're certainly not miserable in heaven. So <laughs> you need to know what heaven is if you're going to release it. Yeah. And, and the important part is if we're in that kind of community with a God who never ceases to love us and accept us mm. and we're with a community of people that love us and trust us then we also know that if we are not on our best for some reason we're we're either not as sensitive to the spirit or we're just literally having a day where the paintbrush and what i'm doing is not working or my words are not coming out or the song wasn't quite as up that, that it's like hey that's okay get up and go another time we absolutely trust what you bring we love it yeah. Yeah, and and it's interesting because you, sometimes you can second guess yourself when you're painting, and, and it's like, oh, I don't like that color, or what? What actually that doesn't look very good, and it, and it's a matter of going that there are actually no mistakes on the canvas. Yeah, that's good. At the time, so I go, okay, Lord, what are you doing? Yeah. And at times, it's there's if there's a uh, icky color brown, it'll be like the sickness in the room. Now paint over it with green yeah. or paint over it with new life 
we'll paint over it with glue, healing, you know, so I was like, so I learned to go, no mistakes on the canvas, something's happening. And often the prophetic word would be the progress of the painting, not always the finished painting. Yeah, that's very good. That is very, very good. Yes. Mm. Mm. And you know, sometimes if we evaluate, we evaluate from certain standards that we think we have that may not have been God's a whole agenda on that day anyway. So sometimes we could actually miss his well done. That's fabulous. That's exactly what I needed from you today because we are trying to, to judge or that bit of fear of man comes in or my own expectations, all those sorts of things. So we've, we've got to, like you said earlier on, we've got to keep coming back to that the audience of one first and primarily, even though it is for the community as well. Yeah, I would stand there and go, okay, Lord, I'm just painting for you. And sometimes okay. he'd say, just paint for you. Just, just <laughs> paint for you. It's good. I like yeah. it. And so there's this, well, no, I'm giving it to you. He goes, why well, am I giving it to you? <laughs> and you've got this yeah. little love story going on in front of the canvas. It's quite nice. Yes. Mm. And I, I think he's bringing a lot more joy into our reality of him. I, I think, yeah. you know, there's still the legacy of, you know, be silent in my sanctuary kind of thing that people grew up with. And mm. even though we've moved a long way from there, I, I still think we've, while we've, we've sometimes still taken on board the seriousness of God, and not always just discovered the joy that he has in us and the joy that he wants us to have in him. And I, I think a lot more of that is being released. It would be a lot more freeing for artists as well. Yeah, if the artists would say, oh, how do you know what the painting means? How do you have the interpretation? When do you get the interpretation? You know, and I'm just like, sometimes I don't. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's not until the pastor has asked me, would you like to say something about the painting? And I, I always say yes, even though it sometimes it's not until I actually start to speak that the what on the painting comes through. Mm. But the point is, everybody could have a different interpretation of the painting, yeah. and that's all correct. Yes, there is no one interpretation. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's you actually you can't get it wrong. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah. So good. Yep, very true. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just love the fact now, and I think, you know, particularly the art has been an example. I, I think dance did that to some degree, but dance was still very much associated with music. So it seemed to be a, a little more of a natural extension. But I think now that we've become um, much more accommodating and, and, and inclusive of, of art, I, I'm curious to know what other creative expressions um, we may yet, we have yet to see. Yeah, I, I'm sure there are things going to happen in our worship services that we can't even yeah. imagine today. Yes, yes. So, yeah. I, because so, because yeah. If, if we're, um, you know, if there is this sense of, you know, heaven on earth, and Jesus said to pray that heaven, you know, would be on earth, um, I don't think we've got any idea of all that happens re-worship. Yeah. Uh, and when I say worship, again, it's that bigger definition of worship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wonder, and so for me, it's just having that openness of heart, that openness of, um, of expectation that God, we, we just want to worship you in, in fullness. Um, you know, it would be, it would be a pity for an artist, for example, to be only ever able to have, four colours and never mix them and never create more. What I wonder if God is saying, hang on, don't restrict me to an instrument, a voice and even a, a paint yeah. brush or paint. Yeah. So I, I'm excited for the more. I just want to have that openness of heart and expectation and not miss it um, when, when it, it comes and it may take yeah. us all by surprise and it may even be, a little bit confronting because stuff that's not unknown can at first feel at best awkward or not good or not comfortable or this is unknown, I don't like it, you've got me unsettled. So I, I just was, have an openness of heart. Yeah, and that's what art was like at the beginning. It's like, why are you doing that? Why are you painting yes. on? You know, yes. it's like all these questions. And it's just like, well, 
we feel God's on it and we're yeah. curious to know what he's got next. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it is. Yes, yes so I am still curious. I want to stay curious. Yes. Aha, uh -huh. the childlike curiosity. We need to keep that. Mm. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, I'm going to wrap up this interview now. Thank you so much for talking with me. Oh, it's um, been just wonderful. It's been wonderful to go back to those early days and realise that now something that's so known and familiar in so many different places, we were exploring before we knew anybody else. I mean, there probably were other people doing it, but we didn't know about it at that time. All yeah, we knew yeah was I believe there were, you know, I've spoken to artists and they're like, oh, we were doing it 20 years ago. We were doing it 10 years ago. Well, you were doing it when? Uh, and and I'd said, um, you know, God asked me to raise up an army of artists. When? 2005. Oh, he asked me in 2009. I'm like, yeah, the first Renaissance was 400 years. So I think this is going <laughs> to take a little bit of time. In actual fact, we're only redeeming something that got lost a long time in the church. So yeah. it's always been, I believe, on God's heart. But I do believe it's not only that re redeeming what was gone before, but it's that curiosity that you said about being open to what's it going to look like next. So, yes. Yeah. That yes. is exciting. Absolutely. Okay, yes. you know, we could, we could talk for hours. <laughs> Good, but thank you. It's been lovely going back and thinking through and yeah, seeing it from the perspective of this many years later has been so worthwhile. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm.